The Phillies offense that has been lacking for most of the season has found its groove on this nine day road trip. The temperature is way up here in the desert and the only thing hotter is the visiting team swings. The road trip finale is next and it's a perfect day for a swim. Nice and comfortable inside Chase Field. A nice day to take a stroll as we got a little day baseball today. The Phils go for the series sweep against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Game three of this series. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Ben Davis. We'll hear from Greg Murphy, as everybody knows, in just a little bit. All right, so today you got Zach Eflin against Archie Bradley. The Phillies have already seen Archie Bradley. Zach Eflin, though, we've gotten a chance to see a few starts, and he's gotten better with each passing start in the Phillies uniform. That's what I like, is he continues to make adjustments. He's a big guy. Sometimes it's hard for him to get the ball down to the catcher's shin guards, but the last couple starts, he's been very good in doing that. He's mixing all his pitches. And like you said, Pete McCannon said, I want to see more of this guy, and rightfully so. It's a very good combination fastball slider does mix in a curveball and also a changeup but the fastball slider combination has been very good and when he's down he's very effective and induces a lot of ground balls the Giants were impressed with his stuff as they said as Bruce Bochy said he said he had really good stuff so now it's all putting it together to try to pick up his first major league win location is so important for a pitcher and I thought in this game he had very good location yeah, and he started off really not having that good location but he started to work way his way through it and he started to make those adjustments and you'd love to see those adjustments out of a younger pitcher all right speaking of adjustments the Phillies will have to adjust to Archie Bradley Archie Bradley's had two very good outings in a row including his last start against the Philadelphia Phillies and it's a guy that can really sit fastball on 73 percent of the time Archie Bradley is throwing the fastball. He does mix in some curveballs. Very seldom will he mix in a changeup, but it's predominantly the two pitches. So 50% chance of getting one or the other, Tom. Well, and in this ball game, he got some ground ball outs. He also got some strikeouts, and this double play actually helped him through uh, his particular outing. He did not overpower the Phillies whatsoever. Now, this season, at home, 5.79 ERA on the road. And it's so odd when you see these splits a 3.62 ERA. We know the ball does fly here but those are some crazy splits. He has been pitched very well over his last couple starts. Opposition batting average just at 200 over his last two starts. So he has been throwing the ball better. But I look for the Phillies to get to him early. Phillies have picked up a lot of extra base hits during this road trip and he's given up six home runs here at Chase Field. So it will be Archie Bradley on the mound for the D-backs his ninth start of the season. Zach Eflin making his fourth start here in the big leagues for the Phils as ERA continues to go down. Well, that looks like it's pretty refreshing. We'll find out how refreshing it is when we return to Chase Field. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Toyota, get big savings at Toyota's red, white, and blue sales event. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank. The next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at IBX.com.
for this three-game series and what has been a, a, an eventful road trip for the Phillies offensively. Their numbers have been through the roof, and that's part of the reason why they're going for a better than 500 road trip. Peter Borges has had a great run as the Phillies' number two hitter. Murph, these are numbers I think everybody had anticipated for the Phillies over the last couple of weeks, and it's finally come to fruition. You know what, Tom? You're absolutely right. It is, uh, you know, you got to remember back just a couple of weeks ago where the Phillies weren't scoring any runs, and they head out onto the road and have success. In fact, in six of the eight games that they've played on the road so far, double digits in hits. They've also scored 48 runs in those eight games. Now, the record is just four and four, but as we talked about, they are going for a winning road trip, and that's that's why we're here. We got to this point because I had said I, I hope that we get a chance to, to sweep the uh, the Diamondbacks, and if we do, I will get in the pool. And I, you know, I'm a man of my word, Tom. So I am going to climb into this pool, going to dive into this pool in just a second or two because uh, hey, the Phils are playing good baseball. They're scoring runs, and that's what we like to see back in Philadelphia. Well, everybody has to do their part. The players have done their part. They've uh, kept their routine. Uh, the same as it's been over the last several days. Cody Ashey is batting third today for the Phillies for the first time this year. How about what he's done in the month of uh, June? He has nine doubles in the month of June. That is something that has certainly helped Cody Ashey and the Phillies offense find a bit of consistency. All right, Murph, so you said you're going to do it. You're going to do your part. Let's see you do your parts. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect is the way to put it. Perfect timing, Murph. I can't believe that you cued the fountains exactly the way uh, we had asked you to. That is absolutely hysterical. He's a good sport, that Greg Murphy. He's a good sport. And now the fountains go off. <laughs> Perfect timing. I think somebody was. Um, I think somebody was on our side on that one by uh, cueing the fountains at the perfect time. <laughs> it's as if you hit a home run, Murph. I know. That was pretty cool. That was, uh, we couldn't have had better timing. <laughs> Very refreshing. It's 108 degrees outside, so this isn't bad. Not hey, bad Murph, at all. <laughs> Murph, if you need some extra hair product, you know where to go, buddy. <laughs> I may need that later on. I'll stay out here for a little while, guys. I think, I think it, it answers an age old question that that is Murph's real hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Diamondbacks have taken the field, and the Phils are getting ready to uh, bat here in the top of the first. Let's take a look at their lineup brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. It'll be Herrera, Borges, and Ashy, followed by Michael Franco, Tommy Joseph, and Cameron Rupp. Freddy Galvez bats seventh, Cesar Hernandez hits eighth, and batting ninth in pitching is right hander Zach Eflin. They're facing a guy that's been kind of a hot pitcher recently, and that's Archie Bradley, the right hander former number one pick for the Diamondbacks he uh, has been effective in his last two starts and the word around the Diamondbacks is that they are looking for his consistency from a winning standpoint maybe he's found it I don't know but the Phillies had a tough time against him in Philadelphia on the last homestand his numbers three and three Ben with an ERA of four point five zero he does have a good arm will sit about ninety three really just the three pitches predominantly though fastball curveball you saw some big hooks that he'll throw saw that in the open Last two starts been very good. Opposition just hitting 200 against him in the last couple starts. Time now for our Nissan Keys to the Saftadoons ball game. Well, there's a few. Usually I stick to two, but today I went with three. Offense continue to stay in the middle of the field. They've done a very, very good job of staying up the middle. Hopefully they continue to do that. Base runners, they need to make the adjustment and clean up the base running problems that they've had. And Eflin, one pitch at a time. Just one pitch at a time. Try and make every pitch that you're throwing the most effective one you can. Well, Odubel Herrera will lead things off. Speaking of being effective, Odubel hitting 321 is the Phillies' leadoff hitter. And overall hitting 307 with eight homers and 28 RBIs. His 307 batting average is 11th best in the National League, and we are ready to go. The finale of this nine game road trip. First pitch is outside, so we're underway. And it's one ball and no strikes. Odubel has 12 hits on this road trip. He has six hits in this series alone. Fouls it away. One ball and one strike to him. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant for this afternoon's ball game is Billy Scott of Middletown, Delaware. Phillies hit home run in today's ball game. Billy will win $100. Stop by McDonald's today and enjoy the new McPick 2 for 250 menu. I'm loving it. Good luck, Billy. 
Phillies have hit their share of home runs on this road trip as Murph talked about. Two balls and one strike to Odubel. Archie Bradley 23 years old he was the seventh pick by the Diamondbacks in the 2011 drafts. In fact he was the second first round pick for the D backs in the first 10 picks that year. Trevor Bauer was picked third Garrett Cole of the Pirates was the number one pick in the draft that season. Anthony Rendon was picked ahead of him. Had a sliced foul down a left field line. And it's three balls and two strikes to Odubel. Who began yesterday's game with a 10 pitch at bat. I think he's a little surprised that ball traveled the way it traveled down yeah. the left field line. Up high, ball four. And the Phillies have a leadoff base runner here in the top of the first inning. A nice way to start it. He continues to do his job at the top of the lineup, whether that be via walk, via base hit. Sometimes he doesn't even get on, but he makes the pitcher throw a lot of pitches. Well, last night when that happened, Peter Borges came up and swung at the first pitch from Zach Greinke. In fact, Michael Franco, who was up next, did the same thing. Borges has had a very nice turnaround, hitting 259 overall. He has hit in eight consecutive games. And it's one ball and no strikes to him. Borges' average over the last 16 games is 478, which is the highest in Major League Baseball, in all of Major League Baseball. Pops it up, and that should be out of play, and is. And it's one ball and one strike. How long will Peter Borges bat second for the Phillies? Pete McCannon said, only time will tell. So he likes the fact that he has good speed, that he can bunt if he needs an a bunt. Would he prefer a lefty in the two hole? Yeah, he would. Most managers will, would. Two well, balls and one strike. One thing he's done a lot better job of is hitting that hole on the right side. He's hit some balls to right field a lot better recently than he did earlier in the season. Obviously, with that gaping hole on the right side, you can use it. A lot of hits are over there. Well, Double creeps off first. That ball is hit well deep to left field. Going back on it is Drury to the wall. It is gone. A two run home run right out of the chute for Peter Borges. And the Phillies jump out to a two zip lead here on the top of the first inning. Well, that's a lot better than shooting that hole between first and second, isn't it, Tom? <laughs> it sure is. How loud was that? Third home run of the year for Borges, 17 RBIs. And Billy Scott of Middletown, Delaware, you've just won $100 thanks to Peter Borges and the McDonald's home run jackpot. Way to go, Billy. Boy, that's a short swing. And it's so funny when Murph interviewed him the other night, he said, I'm not trying to hit the ball hard. If you were to interview 99 out of 100 hitters, they'd say, just trying to hit the ball hard. Absolutely. Just trying to hit the ball hard. He said, he's just trying to put it in play. You know, put it in play, make contact, let the pitcher supply all the power. Well, his theory on doing that works against a guy like Archie Bradley, who throws mostly fastballs. And throws in the low 90s. So the ball is going to travel if you connect with it properly. 71.3% of the time you're getting a heater. It's already fence high, Tom. All you have to do is tap it. <laughs> Isn't that what they said about Yasmani Tomas? Yeah. Well, that's a good start for the, the good guys in gray. Yeah, they haven't had many first inning runs. So when they get them, you embrace them. Peter Borges in the two hole with his third home run. He's now hitting nine straight games. Two and two to Cody Ashey. One for six in this series so far. And he pulls that one toward first, a fair ball. 
He had assisted for Goldschmidt. Well, we mentioned the uh, issues that Archie Bradley's had here at home. He's only allowed one home run on the road. Speaking of home runs, Michael Franco had a nice night last night. Got a cement mixer there and did not miss it. Castillo and Delgado both just kind of hung their head there. Watch that ball sail out of the ballpark. Michael talked about uh, his home run last night and his double, and he said, I understand what everybody is saying about my swing. He said, I am trying to. Uh, be a little more under control at the plate. I think that's a good way of putting it. We have seen less and less of that helmet falling off. Two balls and no strikes. Broken back ground ball left side. Charging is Lamb. And there are two outs. I'm speaking with Dave Magadan again yesterday, he said the bottom line is, and he really likes Michael Franco. So the bottom line if you swing where your helmet is falling off then that's too hard. <laughs> I say good point bags. Well he was the kind of guy that was always under control when yes, he was he in was. the batter's box. Two outs and Tommy Joseph will be the hitter Tommy uh, 0 for 5 the other night with four strikeouts. 234 with eight home runs 15 runs batted in. Takes a fastball and it's 0 and 1. Talked to Tommy's mom and dad yesterday before the start of the ball game. They were excited to get a chance to see their son play. Inside, 1 and 1. Two balls and one strike. Pretty good swing right there, and he shoots it into the press box. And it's two and two. Tommy Joseph uh, grew up in this area. In fact, played Little League baseball with Jake Barrett, who's one of the relief pitchers for the Diamondbacks. Fouls it back to the screen. By the way, that home run by Borges, that is the 44th home run the Phillies have hit on the road compared to the 27 at home. Wow. He holds up tough pitch to hold up on and it's three and two. Well this is already a different story for the Phillies against uh, Archie Bradley. He's thrown 25 pitches. Here in the first inning. And he was economical the last time these two teams faced each other. Back over the mounds charging is Segura. He gobbles it up. And the inning is over. But the Phillies strike first. First. With Murph heading into the pool as the fountains go off. Usually that's a sign of good times. And Peter Borges, a two run home run, gives the Bills the early lead here at the top of the first inning. We'll go to the bottom of the first when we get back.
Zach Eflin is going to try to quiet that lineup. Let's take a look at it. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Segura, Goslin, and Goldschmidt, Lamb, Tomas, and Herman in the bottom third of Drury, Bradley, and Bourne. So the first batter is Gene Segura, and he takes a fastball for a strike. It's 0-1-1. Segura hitting 313. As you look at Eflin's numbers so far in the big leagues. First start he allowed eight earned runs second start against these Diamondbacks two earned runs last start no earned runs. So that's why his earned run average is dipping down. One ball and two strikes. He's had a really tough go of it up in Toronto on his first start of the year but look at this scan report right about ninety three miles an hour you might see him get up to ninety five ninety six slider best out pitch. But needs to get the pitches printing down. It's sitting just over 18. Over to first base. Tommy Joseph, nice play. And three unassisted. And there's one away. Yeah, the pitches per inning, even for, you could probably say that, wouldn't you agree, for the last two guys that were out on the mound for the Phillies? I mean, that's been an issue for the Phillies. Velasquez, game one, and Ikoff, game two. Well I would say that Vince is more of a strikeout pitcher. I wouldn't say Zach is necessarily a strikeout pitcher. Pitches more to contact and that's why I'd like to see that number come down. Trust your stuff. Trust your defense. Here's Phil Gosselin and he takes low. One ball and no strikes. Gosselin one for two so far. Overall hitting 255. And he lines one down the right field line. That'll be in for an extra base hit. It's going to the wall and Borges will play it off that wall. It's a one out double for Goslin. A hard hitting fryer Tom. <laughs> it's his fourth double of the season. Today's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television to change the language through the menu. On your cable. So they had Teal Tuesday. What's today for their uniform? Um, today is Red Brick Wednesday. Red Brick Wednesday. Or Sonoma Red Wednesday. I made that up. Adobe Red. Is yeah. that what that is? I think it's Adobe Red. Adobe Red. Paul, Gold, Paul Goldschmidt is the batter. Hitting 300 with 14 homers and 51 runs batted in. All right, so it's Sedona. <laughs> we were both close. Balls and one strike to Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt two for eight so far in this series. Hitting 389 since the 17th of May. And it's 0 2. Well, there is Sedona. There you have it. <laughs> Sonoma would be where we just were in San Francisco. <laughs> or a store in the mall. Or a section at the wine store. Or that. 0 2 pitch. In the dirt, blocked by a rup, and it's 1 and 2. Well done, Cameron. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard. Some games that are moving along or have become final. This one's moving along. It's at the bottom of the seventh inning. Cabrera hits another home run against his former team. And the Tigers lead them, the Marlins 8 to 3. Tom Kohler was on the mound for the Marlins in that one. One ball, two strikes to Goldschmidt with the Phillies on top, 2 0. Ball upstairs. He checked his swing, says Bob Davidson. Current National League East, Miami four and a half games out behind Washington, which uh, defeated the Mets last night. Phillies are 12 and a half out. And the Braves uh, in the basement in the National League East. Over to third. Big hop for Michael Franco. Looks the runner back. Throws high, and Tommy Joseph is tagged out. Uh, tags out Paul Goldschmidt. Now they're two away. Nice play by Tommy. For a ball to hit just in front of the plate, it stayed in the air an awful long time to Mike Kell, didn't it? 
Yeah, Mike Kell, I, I think, misjudged it for a moment. He did, and what that does is it throws off his rhythm, it throws off his footwork. As he goes to get it, you see him attack the baseball, and then he has to throw. It doesn't get his feet really underneath him. Doesn't get on top of the ball either. That's why the ball sails, but very good play there by Tommy Joseph. Diamondbacks are taking a look at it in the dugout, and they would like Bob Davidson to review it. Wow. So Bob Davidson and Dal Scott, the crew chief, will take a look at it. It did look like Tommy Joseph got it with a, the naked eye. This is early to ask for a review, so they must have seen something. You know the other thing I think that uh, caused Michael Franco some issues is Goldschmidt was moving up the first base line. And he can run. And that kind of puts some pressure on him to make that throw. Bob Davidson, the first base umpire, uh, one of the veterans of this crew, uh, was about four or five feet away when he made that call. Take a look. We'll try to slow it down as best we can. See there, it's tough to tell whether he dragged it across the K and the S in D backs. Take another look. A little side shot. Goldschmidt trying to contort his body away from Tommy Joseph. Right there, he hasn't hit him yet. I don't know if he hit him. The odd part about this is Goldschmidt just ran off the field he like, did. like he was out. Like he got him. Yeah, that was part of, uh, I think, why all of us and thought. And he's still standing in the dugout. All right, well, here's the decision. All right, they're going to go inside. They must be having some technical difficulties. So that means they have to go inside to review it. Last night when we saw Zach Granke leave the field, he went in and got some icy hot. I don't think that's what Dale Scott and Bob Davidson are doing. Watch this again. Like this shot looks like it got you got him on the C and the K and D backs, right? Right. I mean, just it just looks that way. But this shot, you don't see him make contact at all, unless it's subtle in some way. Off his sleeve. I think that shot shows you that he missed him. Yeah. But I think what you said too about Goldschmidt not really saying anything. Dave McKay didn't really say anything. No. In the first base coach's box. He just went off the field like, yeah, he got me. Yeah. Not really pleading this case. Well, everybody's different when it comes to that stuff. But you know, every manager would like the players or the coaches to make a bigger deal out of it, just to kind of lead them down the right path. Zach Eflin just standing behind the mound talking to uh, one of the other umpires. Doesn't really matter to the folks at the pool. It's a pretty good crowd out there today. It was nice of them to welcome Murph uh, into the family <laughs> for at least a few <laughs> moments. And then they said uh, you can't have any burgers and you're out of here. Well you got to go. I think this is one of the criticisms of replay. Now they're having technical difficulties, so that's why they went down. But this is taking way too long. There's Zach Greinke, who uh, left last night's game after two plus innings. We wondered why he went off the field to to the clubhouse. We found out after the game he went and put some icy hot on his uh, oblique, and that did not work. So they decided to lift him from the game. Take another look. This does not give you an answer, I don't think, because the call is going to be made here. And they say safe at first base. So runners on first and second with one man down. Call has been overturned. And the D-backs maintain their challenge. Now batting third baseman, number 22, Jake Lang. So runners on first and second E5 by the way so that error is the sixth of the year for Franco. The review took three minutes and 51 seconds. 
And now Jake Lamb is the batter with the Phillies up 2 0. Jake Lamb hitting 286 with 16 home runs and 52 runs batted in. He's hitting 405 over his last dozen games. He had a home run last night for the D backs. Takes low and it's 2 0. Well, this is where uh, where Zach can't start nibbling. He's got to kind of go after the the hitters. Center field shot. That is a blast. Going back on it is O'Double, and it is gone. A three-run center field home run for Jake Lamb. It's his ninth home run here in June. And the Diamondbacks take a 3 2 lead. Ball was hurt. Yes, it was. You have a one out double. Yeah, that's okay. But then you have an error. And then you leave the pitch up in the zone, and Zach Eflin knew it. Ball was hit an awful long way to dead center field. Well, for Lamb, it's 17 home runs now, 55 runs batted in. He's on pace for a 100 RBI season, which I think is more than what anybody here in Arizona would have anticipated. Gasmati Tomas takes a strike, hitting 261 with 13 home runs, 31 runs batted in. He hit a home run in last night's game. Just a bit low, and it's one and one. One ball and two strikes. So I look at that pitch by Eflin, and all I see is just lack of extension. Like he's just getting there, but he's just not down and through with it. Now is that the, the home run pitch you're talking yes. about or the one that Tomas yes. swung at the home run pitch yeah. home run pitch. Well it's kind of what you talked about with his last start you thought he got back on top a little bit better against the Giants. Yes. Early on in that ball game not as much but as, they, as that ball game progressed he was on top of everything. 2 2 pitch to Tomas. That one's hit the opposite way. Yeah, that's great location right there. You could see him get out over in front of that knee down and through. Now he is a big guy at six foot six, two hundred fifteen pounds. I think he's taller than that. He does. I, seem I know taller that's. Than that. <laughs> well, you're six five. I'm and, six and he's, five. I, I feel like he's three inches taller than he I. He does look bigger. Outside, three and two. And a strike three call. Good location on that fastball. This is an effortless release. See his extension now. See I'm talking about down and through. Yep. Yeah, it's almost as if he's using that six foot six inch frame to his advantage. You create that downhill plane. Chris Herman has not played in the this series. Watch the follow through down through his left kneecap. He gets out over top of the baseball follow through right there. Mm -hmm. Out toward right center field. Odubel Herrera going out into the alleyway says he has it. And he makes the catch and the side is retired. But the Diamondbacks take the lead. They do so on a three run center field home run by Jake Lamb. So three runs two earned one unearned.
Tri-City Royals of the three-game series. The first two games will end with the Xfinity's fireworks shows. Friday, 7.05, Saturday at 5.50. Tickets for that three-game series can be purchased by going to phillies.com. We move to the top of the second, 3-2. to D-backs on top. Each team has hit a home run. Diamondbacks had a three-run home run against Zach Eflin. Phillies, meanwhile, had a two-run home run by Peter Borges against Archie Bradley. And Cameron Rupp will start things off. Rupp hitting 270 this year with seven home runs. He's hit in six straight games. He leads the Phillies in doubles with 14. It'll be Rupp, Galvis, and Cesar Hernandez. Opposite way, and that's a base hit for Cameron Rupp. And he's now hitting seven straight. Continued to use the whole field, Cameron. Well done. Yeah, you talk about letting a ball get deep. I mean, he was late on that, but he was able to have enough to shoot it the other way. This is bats flying through the zone. You're right. He lets that ball get deep. And that's the same swing we've seen on home runs to left field for Cameron. Freddie Galvis had a good night last night, hitting 300 on this road trip. That one is a high fly ball to right center field. Tomas says he has it. Good swing. He got under it just a little bit. And one away. Second baseman, number 16, Cesar Hernandez. It's funny when I work with kids, literally kids, and they'll hit a pop up and they'll hit it a mile high. I said, what was wrong with that swing? They're like, I did this. I, did. I said, there was nothing wrong with it. You hit the bottom of the ball. And they look at me funny like there had to be something with it. I, I made an out. I, I, I think that they're probably trained that there's something wrong when you do something like that. And it's unfortunate, but they, you know, to a certain extent, they are. I know I was guilty of it sometimes with, you know, my boys when they played. One ball and one strike, but you have a better understanding of, you know, what's good and what's not good. You can see, was the bat quick to the baseball? Was there any wasted movement? All those things factor into whether it's a good swing or not. Off the hands, blooped out towards center. That'll drop for a base hit. And Cesar's aboard. Up to second base goes Cameron Rupp. If your employees are on the road as much as the Phillies are, protect them with Independence Blue Cross. They're part of a national system of Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans that cover more than 100 million members across the country. Live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com slash biz. Zach Eflin looking for his first major league hit. Let's see if he's going to get his first major league sacrifice bun here. The corner's pinching in. He squares, takes a strike. Goldschmidt's thinking, I'm going to get this and I'm going to fire it to third to force Cameron Rupp. Jared Eikhoff came in from running today. I was sitting on the bench, pouring sweat, pouring. And he came in. I said, Hey, Jared. He goes, Hey, Ben. I said, What did he swing it last night? And he looked at me kind of surprised, like, You're not going to say anything about my pitching? As modest as he is, uh, he was just like, Thanks. <laughs> They have to get a kick out of getting a hit. Absolutely. They have to. At the knees again, it's 0-2. Goldschmidt is uh, looking for Jake Lamb to lay down the signs. I think on the previous play, he charged, Lamb charged, but the pitcher stayed on the mound. I think Goldschmidt was telling Archie Bradley, you got to be on the move. Swing and a miss. 92 mile hour fastball, and there are two outs. To get something in the gap right here. You know about Cesar's wheels at first base. Definitely score on a double.
One ball and one strike at 91 mile an hour fastball toward the outside part of the plate. And a liner out toward right field. Tomas had him play perfectly. And the side is retired. No runs, two hits, and two men left for the Phillies. We'll head to the bottom of the second. It's 3 2, Arizona. Of uh, Philadelphia, we will be home tomorrow, an off day, and then a series against the Royals on Friday night. We move to the bottom of the second here in Phoenix. Diamondbacks three, Phillies two, and Brandon Drury will be the leadoff hitter. His numbers this year: 272 with eight home runs and 18 RBIs. When the Diamondbacks were in Philly, Drury was there for a couple of days and then sent down to the minor leagues. And then brought back when Socrates Brito went on the disabled list for the Diamondbacks. Drury had a lot of at bats early this season for Arizona. He has 213 ABs. He's played in now 62 games. But with some of the adjustments that the Diamondbacks have made to their outfield, he wasn't getting as many ABs. So that's why they sent him down. But out of necessity, had to bring him back up. Two one pitches in there for a strike. It's two and two. Fastballs comfortably hitting 95 here this afternoon. Off the hands, and that'll be out toward left field for a base hit for Drury. So he's aboard to start the second. I think so far, Eflin's fastball is, is good. It's got good life to it. He just has to figure out the slider, just to command it a little bit more toward the outside part of the plate. I would agree with that. Archie Bradley two for 15 he has a couple sacrifice bunts this year. He 
He squares and bunts at it and got a piece of it and it's 0 and 1. So Ethel not able to get a bunt down here. You see Bradley just kind of jab at that one. One guy that played here at second base for Diamondbacks, Jay Bell, was the best bunter I've ever seen. Now I know there was some guy, Brett Butler, obviously was a guy who could do it for a base hit, but Jay Bell and Jim Leland used to have it when Jay Bell was in Pittsburgh. He used to have him do it in first inning. Guy gets on, you're bunny. And he'd be able to do it on that AstroTurf at Three Rivers, which was like, it was like bunting on pavement. <laughs> and he was able to get, but he would get bunts down. He was just so disciplined at the plate on how to do that. There's the slider I mean, butted that, foul. Look at that, that, that form is awful. It's just awful. Well, and I think uh, we were talking about it too, even from a Philly standpoint, guys like Eflin and guys like Jared Eikhoff, they have to become better bunters. They do, and, and it's something that they're going to realize, not only is it going to help the ball club out, obviously you're going to advance runner in the scoring position, you're going to help yourself out, you're going to be enabled to stay in the ball game longer. Chip Hale looks like he's a little heated about that effort by Archie Bradley. Should be. Here's Michael Bourne batting ninth today, and he takes strike one on the outside corner. It's interesting how I mean, you don't always see managers being animated in the dugout when they're trying to get a point across. He was noticeably agitated at that butt attempt. That's great. As well he should be. So now you go from having a man on second base with one out runner in scoring position to a possible double play the Phillies are out of the inning. Michael Bourne hitting 242 with two home runs and 15 runs batted in. He is 0 for 7. Chappelle still talking to Archie Bradley about it. Dale Scott, the crew chief behind the plate today. Bob Davidson at first, Lance Barrett at second. Pat Hoborg at third. Fly ball left field. Cody Ashley got turned around. That's carrying pretty well, and it's over his head. A one hop into the stands. An opposite field double for Michael Bourne. Tough play for Cody. Once he got turned around the first time, it was kind of difficult for him to find his spot the second time. And I don't expect that ball to carry that far, especially off the bat of Michael Bourne. Michael Bourne had a tough night last night with the three strikeouts. Cody gets turned around. Even if he gets back on the ball, that ball so landed so close to the fence. It's a tough play. So second and third with one man down, and say Gore is the batter. Zagora lifts it out to center field. O'Double will get under it, make the catch. His throw goes toward third. Tagging and coming home from third is Drury. So it's four to two. Diamondbacks on top. Knowing exactly what needs to get done for Gene Segura. His 33rd RBI of the year. And now Goslin, who had the double his first time up the opposite way.
Michael Bourne at second base. Gosselin making his 11th start at second base. And he has been a nice uh, addition to this team off the bench these last couple of years. Hitting 294 as a pinch hitter this year. Getting a chance to start today. And Segura, who is a shortstop by trade, slides from second over to short. And Nick Ahmed gets the day off. What a luxury to have someone like Phil Gosselin on your team to play all over. Even throw him in the outfield. Over the mound, and Galvis takes a nice, comfortable hop. Throws Gosselin out, and the side is retired. Diamondbacks do score a run. The double by Bourne helped the cause, and the sack fly by Segura made the difference. Com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Ben, the question is what is the who who was the D back player who had nine RBIs in one game versus the Phillies in 2002? What D back player had nine RBIs in one game versus the Phillies in 2002? And I will tell you that following that effort, he did not say what Peter Borges said that he's not trying to hit the ball hard. He said, I'm just trying to hit the ball hard every time I'm up here. Third baseman? Uh, no. No? Gorgeous with a two run home run, his first time up. It'll be Gorgeous, Ashy, and Michael Franco. Gorgeous takes a strike, and it's 0 1. First at bat. It's a fastball up and in. Goes at it with his hands and drives it on out. Very loud home run. Right, and with that home run, Borges, who was hitting over 400 during the month of June, raised his average to close to 415 in the month of June. And he's hitting 263 overall. So we're going to miss one and two. He is tops in the National League in batting average in the month of June. He's the only guy that's hitting over 400 in the month of June. He's number one. Anthony Rizzo of the Cubs is number two at 395. Wilson Ramos, who's now second in the league and hitting overall, is number three. And then you got Matt Carpenter, and then Ichiro is fifth, tied with Carlos Gonzalez. Both hitting 365. Lights it off. And a 
breaking ball in there for strike three. So Borges is down looking and one away. Did that look like a slider? It did look like a slider. Because <laughs> it looked like a slider to me. You look at this pitch here. No, it's curved. That's a curveball. Yeah. Just threw it really hard. From up here behind home plate, it looked like it swept. Yes. But looking at it on that shot from center field, it looked like it was just a hook. Now, that did the same thing. That looked like it was a slider. There's Philly's bullpen coach, Rick Kranitz. Rick has been spending the last uh, several games in the dugout instead of in the bullpen. John McLaren has been uh, in the bullpen as the bullpen coach. It's kind of interesting. Bob McClure as a pitching coach uh, loves talking to people and loves getting the opinions of people he respects. And he just wanted to have Rick in the dugout for the last few days and you know maybe for the next couple of days just to get his thoughts on some of the pitchers and what he's seeing because Rick was a longtime pitching coach in the big leagues. And I think he also wanted him to do what he's doing right now. He's just hanging out talking to Aaron Nola. He's talking to you know some of the other players some of the other pitchers and just maybe with this young staff having conversations about you know how you would go out against this guy you know Jared Eikhoff how you how would you pitch this guy what is your thought process just having another you know sort of mind of a pitcher in the dugout I think a great thing to do for some of these younger pitchers is for Bob McClure or Cranny just to sit down and just say just gauge the swings. Just gauge the swings. Cody Ashley fouled a pitch straight back on the 0 1 pitch. What'd you see there? Oh, he was right on it. Okay. Yeah, and do it with your team, but also the other team. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes to Ashy. Off the end of the bat, flared and popped by Segura. Or if you throw a, a curveball just down in the dirt, how did he take that pitch? Did he fly at it and would just able to check his swing or did he see it the whole way and just spit on it. Third baseman Mike Calabrico. Oh, two down here is Franco who grounded out his first time up. Fastball way upstairs and it's one and oh. I think it's a. I think for a lot of people successful people when you have the. I don't want to say lack of ego when you're as open minded as Bob seems to be as that's pulled to third caught by Lamb where you don't mind to have mind having the advice of others to sort of help your cause. I think it says a lot about your character. It seems to be helping to have the conversation in the dugout right now. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Zach Eflin hoping for a quiet inning. Eflin took a step forward. Now it may not happen all the time, but watch this in San Francisco with Jake Peavy at the at the plate. Competitive nature tells you to go after this baseball. 
You think you can get it. Yeah I'm going to make a play on it. Today off the bat of Phil Gosson he wants to go get it again. Should I go get it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'll let that one go. Now Freddie Galvis made a wonderful play on the one in San Francisco. He got PV. Yes. But that one was a little easier to get Gosling. But the last thing you want is to go up there, try and barehand it. It deflects just a, a little bit, and then the inning continues, and Gosling, Gosling gets a hit. One ball and two strikes to Goldschmidt. He reached on an error by Franco his first time up. And then scored on the home run by Lamb. The ball got a piece of Cameron Rupp. Now that wasn't a piece, that was a lot. Make it a fist to get his hand. This sting. Yeah, got his hand. Yeah. You want to keep it behind the glove as much as possible, but now right off his right elbow. Wow. And then he goes and throws another one in the dirt, and you have to go and block it. That hurts. I don't think I ever got a foul tip off my right elbow. I really don't. Watch this. This hurts. Ow. Fly ball left field line. Franco and Galvis are over. Will they have room? They will, and Franco makes the catch. One away. Jake Lamb's coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks, Tom. It's time for our cold hard facts presented by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And last night, the Phillies got their first win of the season when trailing after eight innings. They were originally 0 and 41 before that. It was the Phillies' third come from behind win in the last six days after having none in their previous 32 games. So that certainly is a good sign. Battling late in games, guys. Pete said after the game last night uh, that he liked it because it made it. It made everybody feel like uh, the first six weeks of the season even though they hadn't had a come from behind victory when trailing after eight before he said that's how the dugout felt like the first six weeks of the season. It was good to see and it was good to see different people contributing too. Hmm. One ball and one strike to Lamb. Double up. That way. Yeah, it's been going good for Jake Lamb against the Phillies. Seems like it's been going good again for Jake Lamb against everybody in the month of uh, June. Nine home runs during the month of June. That first inning homer. Fastball up out over the plate. That was tattooed to center. Well, that was above the uh, the camera well in center field. Yeah. That one's pretty well hit too. George is going back. He's got room at the edge of the track. He just got it in on him. And there are two outs. Phillies fans, fill out your 2016 insurance MLB All Star game ballot now at Phillies.com. Computer, tablet, or smartphone. Vote up 35 times. Vote today. Voting ends at 11:59 p.m. Eastern Time. Vote at Phillies.com/slash vote.
Tomas out to shallow right center field. Borges comes running in. He says he has it. And the inning is over. One, two, three, third. For Zach Eflin. We'll go to the fourth. Phillies down by two. Tommy Joseph will lead it off. Rentals and hidden fees. Call WB Mason and order all natural Blizzard Spring water. Available in five gallon bottles and small packs at a price you will love. Exclusively from who? But WB Mason. Archie Bradley will begin the top of the fourth inning against Tommy Joseph, Cameron Rupp, and Freddie Galvis. Bradley has retired five straight since the single by Cesar Hernandez. And he has a two run lead to work with as we go to the fourth. Joseph grounded out softly to shortstop his only time up. Pass ball and it's 0 1 to Joseph. Bradley had excellent numbers when he was in the minor leagues. I guess you would expect that from a, a first round pick and the seventh pick overall. He was 35 and 19 in the minor leagues with an ERA of just over three. And Joseph pops a foul behind home plate and it's one and two. I think if he throws first pitch strikes and gets ahead of minor league hitters, he's got a good enough curveball that he probably was able to get through those starts without his. As much difficulty as he has in the big leagues. That one's out to left center field. Long run for Michael Bourne. It hangs up there for him. He does have that big curveball, but if you can dominate both sides of the plate with a fastball, and definitely a above average fastball like he has, which he's doing today, you're going to have success, period. In, out, in, in, out, 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 in. You do that, you're going to have success. Cameron Rupp single through the hole on the right side his first time up, and Goldschmidt, the first baseman, slides over an extra step. It's interesting. They play him the pull on the right side, as you would expect, but he's over. Wouldn't you agree, over an extra step? He is. Pulled right at the shortstop Segura. And the ball hit hard by Cameron Rupp. Group tickets are available at Citizens Bank Park for groups of 25 or more. Take advantage of special opportunities including discounts, theme nights, and party areas. There's plenty of benefits and special options, special fundraising opportunities, and a great way to raise funds and awareness. For more info, go to phillies.com slash group tickets. Ready Galvis is the batter.
see Freddie's left handed stance getting a lot more like his right handed stance with that front foot almost out of the batter's box. Third baseline foul past Juan Samuel. Doesn't seem like he gets back set as fast from the left side as he does from the right side when he has that stance. I would agree. Were you a toe tap guy when you played? I did, yes. Both sides of the plate? Yes. And I didn't do it until my third year in professional baseball. I started in 98 in Mobile, in Double A. To the right side, past Goldschmidt it into right field, a base hit. So Galvis is aboard with a two out single. That ends a string of seven in a row, retired by Bradley. Hernandez singled his first time up. To Cesar's credit, I mean he was, I guess you could say he was benched. Mm -hmm. Gets an opportunity where Tommy Joseph didn't feel good in Minnesota that last day, gets four hits. And starts to find himself in the lineup. Nice to see him come back and really react to that benching. Yeah, six hits and ten at bats in this series. Two balls and no strikes. And overall, ten hits on this trip. Liner out toward left center field. That's going to split the gap. And it's cut off by Michael Bourne. Galvis being waved home. Segura's throw to the plate is on one hop in time. And the side is retired. Juan Samuel with the pitcher due up next. Decide to take the chance. And Segura's release was so quick that Freddie was easily thrown out trying to score. Let's go, Phils. 
Well speed certainly hurts and the Phillies try to capitalize on the ball toward left center field off the bat of Cesar Hernandez. Watch how fast Michael Bourne gets to this ball and how fast Segura gets rid of it on the relay. And I was hoping Sammy would send him but Michael Bourne gets to it fires it right to Gene Segura. There's zero hesitation. The Freddy's out by 20 feet. You say well why would Sammy do that you have the pitcher leading off well. That guy from really not known for his prowess at home plate. So if you can sneak a run in there, so be it. But that was a tremendous relay by the Diamondbacks. Well, he was out by a wide margin. So now we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's still four to two, Arizona. And Chris Herman takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. I really thought that ball was going to go to the wall. Once As it left I. the bat of Cesar Hernandez. Yep. Michael Bourne's offensive skills may be uh, diminished over the last few years, but he he still has the speed. Down the left field line. Long run for Ashy and Galvis into foul territory, and Freddie makes a sliding catch. What a play. Oh, man. You want to talk about hand-eye coordination. Freddie Galvis, an outstanding defensive play for the first out here in the fourth. Wow. Catches that on his back in mid slide. He almost overslid it. So he did it in such a way, he went into such a smooth slide where that ball wouldn't bounce in the air on him. If he really hits the ground hard, that's going to jolt his head and that's going to jolt how he sees the ball coming down. Very smooth. Very smooth. Still catching his breath from running from first to, to home. Here's Drury. Hits it toward third. Backhanded by Franco behind the bag. Good, strong throw. Two outs. Hey, the error earlier. That one had a little extra zip on it. Bradley, the pitcher, is up. And a strike three called a fastball right down the chute. And that wraps up the fourth inning. Excellent defensive play by Freddie Galvis to start this inning. And it led to a 1 2 3 bottom of the fourth inning. That retired Chris Herman. And then Eflin took care of the rest.
to you by your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Heard of your local Del Val Honda dealer? Visit DelValHondaDealers.com. By Jefferson, call 800 Jeff now or visit Jefferson.edu. And by Chevrolet, visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Zach Eflin will lead it off. It's no balls and one strike to Eflin. He struck out his first time up. 0 oh 2. Balls lined out to the alleyway and left center field a base and it's the first big league hit for Zach Eflin. It rolls to the middle of the warning track and he pulls into second base with a leadoff double. Pelota. Time to keep that baseball. You hear Andres Blanco down there. Pelota. Grab that ball. Hope they put in a better spot than they put Cedric Hunters. <laughs> When the San Diego Padres lost it. That, that's still. <laughs> <laughs> well, he golfed that one beautifully. He did. Down and got it. Stayed through it. What Freddie just did is uh, something that baseball players and coaches have been doing for years, where they have an extra baseball in their hands. Well, they have the first major league hit of somebody, and they toss that extra baseball in the stands to make it seem like. They've tossed the first major league hit into the stands. <laughs> the balls in one strike to Odubo Herrera. Six hits now for the Phillies against Bradley, but they trail it by two. You certainly know how Odubel's feeling by the facial expressions. And you look back at Freddie Galvis getting thrown at home plate last inning. You're thinking, well, it could have been two runs. It could have been. A lot of times, third base coaches, if they see the pitcher who is not a good hitting pitcher in the on deck circle, you know, they decide to, to take a chance right. and make the defense. You know, make the play. He was out by such a wide margin. I'm sure it's running through Juan Samuel's head right now. Definitely two different schools of thought. One, there's no way I'm sending it, even if it's going to be close, because I want to clear that pitcher and have Odubel lead off the next inning. Or two, I don't think my pitcher's going to get a hit. Round ball to shortstop. Segura has it. Throws to first just in time to get Herrera. Good base running, Zach Eflin. Very good base running. No, Duval's not pleased, but he's down in the count. At least he advanced the runner. Peter Borges is homer today. He's also gone down looking on strike, so he's one for two. Over to shortstop. Eflin breaks and then stops. The infield was playing back. And Borges is out. 6 3 on the putout. And there are two away. Could he have scored? Yes. But again, that's just a pitcher that's not accustomed to being on the bases. See, you got to get a bigger lead than that yeah, as well. Short lead. There's no secondary at all. Ball was hit sharply uh, off the bat of Borges, but I think your your point about the secondary lead is a good one. Cody Ashy takes inside. And two out knock right here.
of the few changeups we've seen out of Archie Bradley. Yeah, you would think a guy like that would throw more changeups, but as you said, the fastball dominates things at 71 percent of the time, so there may not be room for a third pitch all the time. 3 0 pitch is taken for strike one by Ashey. Michael Franco on deck. Ground ball to first, a fair ball down the right field line. Eflin will score. Ashey's on his way to second base. And Tomas will make the throw in for Cody Ashey, an RBI double. It's a 4 3 game. And that is his 10th double of the season. Third baseman, Michael Franco. The third base hit we've seen the Phillies get that just eludes Paul Goldschmidt at first base. Paul not hit terribly hard. They go inside on a 3 1 count. Cody gets it down the line, just out of the reach of Goldschmidt. And Eflin scores, make it a 4 3 ball game. Ten doubles now for Cody Ashe. He's among the league leaders in June. Ten doubles in June. So he's in scoring position for Franco. Eflin gets some congratulations from Steve Henderson. Mm. A very aggressive swing on that. Oh, oh, count. Oh, for two. He's grounded out and lined out. Down the right field line. It's no balls and two strikes. He wound up nearly toward the on deck circle on that swing. That's not the balance you want to have when you complete a swing. You get done that swing, you want to be able to just stand there. Someone comes up and tries to push you over. He can't move you. Excellent numbers with runners in scoring position for Franco. 41 runs batted in, four RBIs in this series. Try to check his swing on a fastball, and Bob Davidson says he went around. The upper body was moving, and he tosses the bat. Sharply toward the on deck circle. He did not agree with that call by Bob Davidson. Now the side is retired. The Phillies get a run on the RBI double by Cody Ashey and will head to the bottom of the fifth. Citizens Bank Minor League Report. Citizens Bank, the next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. So the International League All-Stars will be uh, represented by these three Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Edward Mujica, who has 19 saves, the veteran. Andrew Knapp, whose average is stabilized at 262 and seven home runs. And Cam Perkins. Cam Perkins has done uh, nothing but hit as he, uh, once he, once the Phillies drafted him out of Purdue. Congratulations to those guys. They'll be in Charlotte. And Mickey Moniak made his, his uh, professional debut today 
Had an RBI single in his pro debut, struck out a couple of times, grounded out. And he's down in the Gulf Coast League playing. As Michael Bourne shows bunt and takes ball one. Cornelius Randolph was supposed to play in that game as well. He's been sidelined. Yeah, last time I looked, he was 0 for 1. Uh, I didn't see how he finished. He was the number one pick last year by the Phils. Bourne taps it back toward the middle, past the diving Hernandez. And a base hit. He's thinking two. Peter Borges' throw on one hop, not in time. He was too slow to get to it. And I think he just expected that Michael Bourne would just hold up at first base. First double very conventional off Michael Bourne. This one not as conventional. He's thinking two right out of the box. Yeah, right there that's where Peter was a little slow in getting to it and then getting up he put his head down. So now Segura who is 0 for 1 with a sack fly shows bunt bunts it foul. Michael Bourne can still run like we said. Really no hesitation. That almost goes to from a 4 3 Cesar almost got to that. To a double. Born with seven doubles now with his two here today. Four to three. Phillies down by one. Shot to short, gobbled up by Galvis. One away. This infield is so quick. It is. One away. Phil Gosselin's coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, you guys were just mentioning a couple of the Phillies' first round picks. Former overall number one pick, Mark Capel, who came over to the Phillies organization in the Ken Giles trade. Some news on him today. He was already on the disabled list down there in the minor leagues, uh, rehabbing a shoulder. But uh, we find out today that he had to have elbow surgery. He had a bone spur in his pitching elbow that had to be removed by Michael, Dr. Michael Sicotti. The recovery time, four to six months for Appel. So he is done for the season. The good news is they do expect that he'll make a Full recovery from the surgery today and be ready for spring training in 2017. But uh, already a little bit of a disappointing season for Appel, finding himself on the disabled list for the shoulder. Now he has to have the surgery for the elbow. But the good news is that the shoulder appears to be just fine, and that certainly is uh, is important news as well. He will recover from the elbow surgery, guys. Gosselin takes low, two and zero. Oh. Uh, is unfortunate for Mark Appel, whose first month of the season was outstanding. Yes. Gosselin has doubled and scored. He's also grounded out to shortstop. One for two today. And it's 3 0. Murphy, clean up nicely. Okay, you're all dried up. Must have just stepped outside for like two minutes that's to dry up. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's all you needed to do, really. It's 105 <laughs> outside. The Phillips Clubhouse staff uh, always takes good care of us. They took good care of me today. 3 and 1. Do you have to give back the shirt and the shorts, or is that a keeper? No, I give them back. Oh, really? Yeah, they're probably in the washer right now. It's nice the Burf has somebody to do his laundry for him. <laughs> Must be nice. Pete McCannon, very open and up front with all of us, as he always is. He first day in here, he said, uh, you know, someone brought up the weather, and he said, I I'll give you a little inside information. He said, People here in Arizona, when it's 110, 115 degrees, he goes, little information. We like to stay inside with the air conditioner on. <laughs> Smart people. Thanks, Pete. 
Because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but people tend to stay inside with AC. On. It's always good to know. AC is popping in here right now. Three balls, two strikes to Goslin, one out, runner at second. Chopper over the mound, charging is Galvis. He's going to have to hurry. He does just in time to get Goslin. That's an excellent play. He winds up over toward first base on that. Over to third base goes Bourne. Two plays in a row for Freddie. This one a little tougher than the ball Segura hit. Has to get to it in a hurry, has to get rid of it in a hurry. Goldschmidt fouled out to uh, Galvis or to DeFranco his last time up. Breaks his bat out to shallow left. Galvis says he has it and the inning is over. So they work around the leadoff double by Michael Bourne. It remains a one run game. It's a pretty good pitching by Zach Eflin to get Paul Goldschmidt. We'll head to the sixth. It's 4 3 Arizona. Productive month of June. Peter got off to a slow start this season, but he is making up for it as we head toward the All Star break. Borges isn't in the lineup every day, but when he is, he's been delivering an average in the high 300s for most of the month and is cashing in with runners in scoring position. His speed can lead to problems for opposing teams. It has been recently, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. A nine game hitting streak for Peter Borges thanks to his two run home run in today's game. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Phillies trail it by one. The young fellow's upset about something. He may have had uh, Matt Williams in the the Legends race and Luis Gonzalez won it <laughs> with a come from behind scamper. Tommy Joseph will lead it off. He's 0 for 2. And Joseph hits the first one over to third. Jake Lamb throws him out. And one away. And here's Cameron Rupp. I thought Matt Williams had a comfortable lead, but then Gonzo exploded on the inside. Seems to be over it. Mm -hmm. Gotta stay hydrated, Ben. That's right. Cameron Rupp today is one for two. He's hit the ball sharply both times. Once for single to right, the other time for a ground ball to shortstop. 
His hitting streak is at seven straight games. Outside. Archie Bradley's really settled it down after a long first inning when he allowed the two run home run. He threw 26 pitches in the first inning. Good pitch there. Twelve in the second. Diamondbacks are going to begin bullpen action. They've got a lefty up in the pen. Opposite way. And Tomas will come in and make the catch. Tomas was playing deep in right field. Sunday, July 17th, when the Phillies take on the New York Mets, it's the Galapagos Gang Beach Towel. Compliments of Pico. It'll be given out to fans 14 and under. Tickets can be purchased right now by going to Phillies.com. Little soft tossing Andrew Chafin. That's what he's doing right now just to get himself loosened up. The only lefty in the pen. Yeah, don't forget the last two nights they used Cole Mentor, game one for an extended period of time. Delgado, game two, two long men. One and one. Two and two to Freddie Galvis. Line drive, base hit it to center field for Galvis. It's his second hit of the day. So he's aboard with two outs, just like the fourth hitting. See if Cesar Hernandez can do the same thing that he did in the fourth, and that was to double to left center field. Maybe get it to the wall this time. Good swing there by Freddie. At the plate, second baseman, Cesar Hernandez. Two pals peeking to see who comes into the on deck circle for the Phils, and it is Eflin who's coming out. They've got the lefty warming up. But Eflin just at 76 pitches. Nah, he'll, I, well, I think he'll bat. You know, particularly since the Phillies uh, are just trying to get. I mean, there's an off day tomorrow, so guys can work. Yeah, but he needs to work. Yeah. Yeah, because he's had a couple of outings where he has been lifted even early. Correct. Two to Cesar. Runner goes and stops and the pitch is swung out and missed in the side is retired no runs one hit and one man left for the Phillies we've completed five and a half we'll move to the bottom of the sixth here in Arizona it's four three Diamondbacks. Arizona sports
B. Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Nissan. Shop choose Nissan.com. And buy the Pennsylvania Lottery's new instant game, $100,000 home makeover. Players must be 18 or over. Please play responsibly. Bottom of the sixth inning, Phillies trail at four to three. Well, if you missed it earlier today, this was Murph. He was challenged the other day by John Clark and Ricky Batalico. Somehow we got the Fountains going. If they won the first two games, he said he'd go dive it into the pool, and he went dive it into the pool. It's as if he just won a uh, race. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best form, but I thought it was excellent. Give the man credit. He honored what he said he'd do. Mm -hmm. Jake Lamb will lead it off. Lamb with a three run home run in the first inning. Also flied out to the track in right field. Stairs one and one. Twenty-two. A change up there. Hasn't mixed in a whole lot today, but he's left a few to some lefties arm side. Closer to the right hand batter's box, but a good adjustment there. Got it out in front a little bit more. And had Lamb way out in front. Back toward the box, flagged down by Eflin. He throws another changeup. Doubled up. And he had him out front. All right, who had the better dive? The guy last night or Murph? You know, Murph followed the rules because you're not allowed to dive from outside the pool. You can't jump. Murph was in the pool when he jumped. Just stick with the rules that Greg Murphy yes, he is. Would he have floated? As that ball is punched through the middle, a base hit for Tomas. A one out single, and now Chris Herman's coming up. Catcher, Chris Herman. Tomas swings at every first pitch. So it's the same swing every time. What would you do as a catcher? I just go soft every time. Let's just say throw it out of the strike zone. Yeah. <laughs> Third base umpire thankfully said that Herman went on that pitch. Looked like a pretty good pitch location wise. It's no balls and one strike. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Orioles and the San Diego Padres are in the bottom of the sixth inning. Mark Trumbo again. His 23rd home run. This one a two run shot. Orioles are sitting four and a half games up in the American League East. Big folks here in Arizona are shaking their heads about Mark Trumbo's 23 home runs. Folks in Seattle are probably shaking their heads. Great one year signing. Great business decision on his part. Herman takes outside. They appeal. No swing, says Hoborg. Two and two.
That one's flared to left field. Cody Ashey is going to come in and make the catch. It hangs up long enough. Two away here in the sixth inning. Severino Gonzalez is loosening in the pen for the Phils. Tyler Clifford, who pitched last night, is out of the pen for the defense. About Trumbo's home runs, 23 home runs. I think there's a lot of parks that play small. I think Camden Yards plays the smallest of any park in, in all of all 30 teams. Yeah, you could be right about that. Not taking anything away from him. 23 homers in the big leagues is still 23 homers. On June 29th. But that place plays small. Well, if you were Chris Davis, I would have been shocked if he had left. Yeah. I know it was all about the money, and he would have left if somebody else had given him more. And he probably could hit a home run anywhere, but yes. some of his offensive field shots may not go out in other places. Outside corner again, one and two. So we're seeing a trend here with Zach Eflin working down into the strike zone a little bit better later on in ball games. Maybe just the fact that he's in the big leagues maybe he just has a little too much adrenaline early on in the ball game. Yeah, because these last uh, well since the home run in the first inning he allowed two hits in the second retired the sides in order in the third and the fourth allowed the double in the fifth inning and the single in the sixth. But Basically, it. yeah. Ricky Weeks Jr. is in the on deck circle to pinch hit for the D backs. One two pitch, ground ball to third. Franco is up with it, and he slings it across the diamond in time, and the side is retired. So Eflin, no runs, one hit, and one man left here in the sixth. We'll move to the seventh inning. The Phillies trail it by one. People around the uh, Delaware Valley are thinking, is that all Murph does is go in the pool the whole game? Our Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary. The Phillies trail at four to three as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Peter Borges started the scoring with a two run home run in the first inning, but then Jake Lamb answered with a three run shot in the bottom of the first inning. The Phillies have since added one. The Diamondbacks added a fourth run in the second. Archie Bradley done after six innings and three earned runs. Eflin is probably done too because Jimmy Paredes is out of the on deck circle to pinch hit. You know, he gave up four runs today and the three run home run, but I think Eflin looked pretty good. Yeah, three earned runs out of the four. 
Philadelphia. He's really settled down. Tyler Clifford will take over in this ball game for the Diamondbacks. Even execute the last pitch of the inning there to Drury. Sinker, hard sinker down in there. There's nothing you can do with that pitch. You have to swing at it. Now you're walking back to the bench anyway. Drew Brady's had a big hit in last night's ball game. An opposite field pinch hit double. Helped the Phils begin the ninth inning with a rally, and he begins this inning with a single to right field. All right. Not wasting any time against Tyler Clippard. Center fielder. Time now for our Jeep Stump the Fans trivia quiz answer. All right, Ben, here we go. What Diamondback player had nine RBIs in one game versus the Phillies in 2012? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say Irubio Durazo. How did you know that answer? I mean, how did I know that answer? I had the wrong side of the diamond. First, I thought it was third base. I realized it was first base. You are correct with that answer, sir. Log back on to Phillies.com and find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Odubel bunts it foul. God, ask me the question you're going to ask me. You were going to ask me a question. No, I wasn't. You're going to say, "Why would you think that I knew that I knew that you knew the answer?" It popped up on the screen as I, I was reading. I it. was not looking at the screen. <laughs> was not looking. He had a couple of years where he hit the ball pretty far. Yes, he did. And as we mentioned, you know, Peter Borges is on deck, so he's not trying to hit anything that hard. His first quote. After that game was I was just trying to hit the ball as hard as I could. <laughs> A one pitch inside and it's one ball and one strike. Nine RBIs. Mm. Having a day. I still think Chris Bryant's day the other day was the best. You could possibly have. 16 total bases. Three homers two doubles. Five for five. In the dirt again, two and one. Ramos to the right, Severino Gonzalez to the left. To the right side, and Goslin will get to it. Paredes gets the second base. And Odubel rolls over on one, but he does move the runner up to scoring position and one away for Borges. Right fielder, Peter Borges. Peter Borges is homer today. He's also struck out and grounded out. One for three in the game. You can still throw that change up. Part of the reason never why he struck there. out three in yesterday's game. Yeah. Just never gets there. Over to left side. And Lamb will fire to first in time. Paredes goes to third. But Lamb at the last moment might reach around and try to tag Paredes. I think he was kind of surprised that he was there. Photo day is coming up on Saturday, July 16th, when the Phillies take on the New York Left Mets. Fielder, Tickets can be purchased Ashley. by going to phillies.com. Access to the field begins at 5.05, and photos of your favorite Phillies player can be taken between 5.40 and 6.10. Also, fans 14 and under will receive the W.B. Mason collectible truck. 
Again, go to Phillies.com to find out more information about Photo Day and to purchase your tickets. As she doubled home and run his last time up. In the dirt, 1 0. Came with two outs. Love to see him do it again. And he pulls it down the right field line just a little too quick with it. He almost did do it again. Got a pretty good swing going right now. His average up to 272. Trying to sharpen his skills with two outs and runners in scoring position. Seamer. So that grip in the glove of Tyler Clifford. The alignment defensively, they play Ashy to pull ever so slightly. Check on that one. I didn't think it was that close. Didn't swing at that pitch, Ben. I mean, it looked like it was a strike from the time it left Clifford's hand. Beyond me. Last moment, it just went inside. I think the dugout thought it was a strike. Chip Hale wanted it. Mm -hmm. You need anything, Tom? It's last call. I heard. I'm okay right now. Pulled to the hole, base hit it to right field, and Cody Ashley has just tied this ball game up. Paredes crosses the plate for Cody. It's his second RBI of the day, and it's a 4 4 ball game. It's one thing to get RBIs when you're supposed to get RBIs, but to be able to do it with two outs, that's the guy I want on my team. Well, you saw those numbers. Uh, he only had the one hit with two outs and a runner in scoring position, and he certainly tightened it up here. Keeps his hands back. Another ball just out of the reach of Paul Goldschmidt. Well done, Jimmy Praise, getting that thing started. For the second straight night? Yeah. So Michael Franco is 0 for 3. Takes a change up low. It's 1 0. I would think that Ramos will now come in instead instead of Severino Gonzalez, but we'll see what Pete McCann decides to do. Eflin's day is done. He cannot lose this game. He can still win this game, though. So he's get another run here. Franco has homered in this series. And he fouls it off to the right. The Phillies have now reached double digits and hits again. They've been double digits and hits in seven of the last nine games. 16 hits two nights ago, which was a season high. They've scored 52 runs in the last nine games. Awesome.
Fly ball shallow right field. Tomas comes running in. Gosselin is out. And he makes the catch and the inning is over. However, the Phillies do tie it up. The RBI single by Cody Ashey. Jimmy Paredes is the one who started the rally. And he came around to score as Ashey pretty pleased with his second RBI. between the Phillies and the Diamondbacks. The Braves are coming to town. Monday, July 4th at 4.05, Tuesday, July 5th at 7.05, and Wednesday, July 6th at 105. Citizens Bank Business Person Special. Order your tickets now at phillies.com. Be nice for the Phillies to get home this weekend as they take on the Kansas City Royals before that Braves series. And now Severino Gonzalez will take over for the Phils. And he will face Nick Ahmed, who will pinch hit for Tyler Clippard. So Gonzalez, 3.12 ERA. This will be his eighth game. And the first pitch is lined in the center field, a base hit to start the bottom of the seventh inning. And Michael Bourne, who has two doubles today, will be the batter for the Diamondbacks. And you'd think he'd be bunning here. Yeah, he's taking a long look down at Matt Williams in the third base coach's box. Daniel Hudson warming up in the bullpen. Ahmed does have decent speed. Shows bunt, takes it outside. One ball, no strikes. Matt Williams looking into Chip Hal in the dugout, gets the signs. Maybe hit and run here, 1 0. They may have taken the butt off. Nope. He takes it now 2 0. And now Freddie Gonzalez or Freddie Galvez excuse me coming out to talk to Severino Gonzalez. At the top of the order due up after Michael Bourne. Gene Segura. Franco creeping into third. Bourne shows bun again, takes a strike this time. It's two and one. Why did he not bunt that one? Not the one he was looking for, apparently. I'm sure he's probably pretty confident that even if he gets the two strikes, that he can still lay it down. I doubt they'd keep it on. Ahmed with a short lead off first. Swing it away, and it's off the glove of Rupp. It's three and one. You know, someone who's very adept at bunny, like Michael Bourne, 
If I'm a manager, I wouldn't mind just saying, you know what, the first one's yours. See if you can go ahead and lay one down for a hit. If it goes foul or you butt through it, then you're going to completely give yourself up. But you might roll the dice, get lucky in that first and second with nobody out. 3 1 is looped out toward left center field. It's going to drop for a base hit. Ahmed thinking about going to third. The throw goes back to second, and he's there. So, first and second, Michael Bourne batting ninth today has three hits. And Gene Segura will be the batter. Two balls that weren't hit particularly hard. When I say Gore, you would think he's going to be up there to bunt. Well, you fall behind and counts 3 1, you have to just lay it in there. Yeah, Michael Bourne doesn't hit it particularly hard, but it's down, and the Diamondbacks have something going here. Dave McCannon's coming out, so it looks like it's going to be it for Severino Gonzalez. They're going to go to Ramos, who has been warming up. So a pitching change with nobody out and runners on first and second. Until these are the Diamondbacks tied at four here in the bottom of the seventh inning. NFL predictions Derek Gunn and Ruben Frank don't find out how many wins they think the birds will get in 2016 plus their thoughts on the Super Bowl MVP and countless other fearless forecasts watch quick slants tomorrow night at six right here on CSN. Uh, Dubrai Ramos will be the new pitcher surprised that Pete didn't start Ramos in this inning I guess he figured it was tied. Maybe he can sneak an inning out of Severino Gonzalez. And I say that, I mean, he's only pitched in three major league games, but he is a strikeout pitcher, which is partly the reason he's probably in there now. With Segura up, he squares, and he takes high, one ball and no strikes. Segura today is 0 for 2, grounded out twice, sack fly in the second. Situation where you know Segura is bunting. I'd love to see him just throw that good hard fastball. That's the hardest pitch to bunt. Not an off speed pitch. It's already going down. Pulls the bat back and he does get a fastball and it's 2 and 0. Oh. Balls and no strikes. Mm -hmm. 
Tagoro with decent speed, tougher to double up. Billy's infield uh, playing for two in this 4 4 game. And a liner out towards center field. Odubel Herrera makes the catch. And one out. You know, we have a great vantage point from behind home plate, as you know, we normally do. Sometimes we're higher, sometimes we're lower. We're a little lower here. That ball was kind of knuckling out toward Odubel Herrera. And then it put its blinker on and made a hard left. Right behind home plate. You can really see this ball change directions. She gets up there and then just goes. Stay with it. I'm still bunning there, three one. I, I would have I'm also. still bunning. Yeah, I mean, you have Goslin up next. I know Segura is a better hitter than Phil Goslin. He's still up Goldschmidt though. So first and second, one out. Goslin does have a double today. He's grounded out to short twice. And he takes a fast ball away. One ball and no strikes. Balls and one strike to Goslin. Everybody's stance is different. Goslin has a little bit of movement in his bat after bouncing it on his shoulder before he gets it going. Then he stops, and then the movement begins again as he tries to get that separation to go through the strike zone. So that move. goes forward, yep. hands go back. Liner to right field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Taken on a hop by Borges. A run will score. Going to third is Michael Bourne. It's an RBI single by Phil Gosselin. It's 5-4 Arizona. That run charged to the line of Severino Gonzalez. Really a good piece of hitting there by Gosselin. The pitch over the plate. Came up and set up in. Inside out that ball down the right field line. Well and then your point about you know if you had say Gora bunt then it would have been a two run ball game. If you consider that that would have been the same play. And now Bob McClure out with Goldschmidt coming up. 5 4 Arizona here in the bottom of the seventh inning. He decided to start Gonzalez in this inning. And he allowed a hit to the first two batters. Chappelle had Nick Ahmed lead it off. He's talking to Segura here. What if Segura missed the signs? He could have. He may be telling him too. Maybe tell him too that he's moving to second base and Nick Ahmed is going to be in a shortstop. All right, so the meeting is over between Bob McClure and Adubai Ramos, and Paul Goldschmidt will be the batter. A run is in. All these middle infielders are set up to try to turn two. And a liner to the gap in right center field, and that may clear the bags because Goslin read it well off the bat. One run is in. Goslin's already around third. He's going to score. Two run double for Paul Goldschmidt. 7 4. Diamondbacks on top.
Anthony just getting away from the Phillies. Started with two singles. Almost able to get it out off the bat of Gene Segura, then Gosson single, and then this base is clearing double by Paul Goldschmidt. These pitches are not well located. They're up, middle of the plate. Paul Goldschmidt not able. I'm not going to be missing those too often, but you're right, Gosselin, that's a great read by Gosselin. Makes it home easily. So a double switch for the Phils as Peva Cannon heads out to the home plate umpire, takes the baseball from Ramos, and Adam Morgan will be the new pitcher for the Phillies. So a pitching change, one out runner at second base. We'll be back to Chase Field right after this. Well, the Kansas City Royals are coming to town beginning a series Friday night at Citizens Bank Park. Friday and Saturday after the games will feature the Xfinity fireworks shows. Tickets can be purchased for all three games against the Royals by going to Phillies.com. Adam Morgan makes his uh, first appearance as a relief pitcher this year. Andres Blanco will come in as part of a double switch. So Michael Franco's bat is out of this lineup. Phillies have two at bats to get back into this. They trail at 7 4. Morgan's numbers as a starter 1 and 6, a 6.55 ERA. And he will face Jake Lamb. And Lamb holds up on the first pitch, and it's 1 0. There's that slider Pete is confident that he can get lefties out with. Starts Lamb with that slider. Back toward the box, flagged down by Adam Morgan. Two outs. It's a good pitch. And two away. Nice just to see how Adam Morgan uses his fastball and the amount of energy he puts into that fastball because this being a different role, if, I mean, we've seen him get up to 93, 94 even. If that's a number, maybe he would maybe put a little bit more effort into. I'm not saying velocity means everything, but. If you know that you're only going to be in there for a short amount of time, maybe you can let it go, cut it loose a little bit more. Yeah, well, I wondered if you were going to say the opposite, that he would try to back off it a little bit more. But you're right. Maybe in this role, he can utilize it a little differently. Yasmani Tomas is going to be intentionally walked here. Chris Herman, the catcher, is due up next, so they'll have Morgan face the lefty. And Pete has said too about Adam Morgan. Uh, we're going to see. I mean, there there may be times where he's a long man. There may be times though that he's going to be a situational man. And he said Adam's going to dictate a lot of that. He said, but I have to find out, and that's what I'm going to do over the next several weeks. 
no doubt that he likes his makeup and thinks he can be successful here in this role. How could you not love his makeup? Yeah. He loves to compete. So Chris Herman is the eighth man to bat of this inning. He's 0 for 3 in this game. He's up with two men down here in the bottom of the seventh. Three runs are in. Phillies were down 4 to 2. They tied it up at 4. Now they're down 7 4. Out to left field. Cody Ashy long run toward the corner, and it is a foul ball. Cody went into that fence, slid into that fence rather hard, and he's up limping. Yeah, he did go into that fence hard. That's no way that felt good. That ball not foul by much. Mm -hmm. Watch it go down. And there you see it landed foul territory. His left knee, I think, that goes into the fence. Yeah, that, and it may have gotten caught a little bit too. He slid a long way. No balls in one strike to Herman. And a fastball in there for a called strike three 94 miles an hour on that fastball by Adam Morgan Paul Goldschmidt though helps the Diamondbacks take a three run lead after the RBI single by Goslin he ropes a two run double to right center. By Toyota. Get big savings at Toyota's red, white, and blue sales event. Toyota, let's go places. By McDonald's. Stop by McDonald's today and enjoy the new McPick 2 for 250 menu. I'm loving it. And buy your local Ford stores.
Philly Stroud at 7 4 in the top of the eighth inning. Time now for our Hyundai defensive play of the game. How about this play by Freddie Galvis? Off the bat of Chris Herman. Freddie Guns out, or Freddie Galvis, I'm sorry, gets over, makes it just a spectacular play. Goes into the slide, almost overslides it. Reaches back and makes the play. That is one spectacular play for your Hyundai defensive play of the game, brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well, Segura moves to second base, as we mentioned, might happen, and Nick Ahmed stays in the ball game to play shortstop. And the new pitcher is Daniel Hudson. Hudson in his 34th game. A 3.26 ERA. And he will face Tommy Joseph to start things off. Hudson is the eighth inning man. Ziegler is the ninth inning pitcher. And Joseph takes strike one. Tommy's 0 for 3, grounded out twice and flied out. Takes outside, one ball, one strike. It'll be Joseph, Rupp, and Galvis here in the top of the eighth inning. Love to see Tommy get one in front of his home crowd. And he lines one to center field. Michael Bourne was playing deep, and he makes the catch. He hit that one right on the nose. And one away here in the eighth. That'll bring Cameron Rupp to the plate. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. It's time for our greater coverage of baseball presented by T-Mobile. And the Reds outfielder Billy Hamilton had to leave today's Cubs-Reds game after getting hit in the face with a fly ball off the bat of Anthony Rizzo. The ball uh, traveled out to the outfield to hit off the left fielder's glove, Adam Duvall, and hit Hamilton in the face. It then ricocheted far enough away that Anthony Rizzo was able to round the bases for an inside-the-park three-run home run. Hamilton, of course, is listed as day-to-day. -day. And you mentioned Mark Trumbo getting his 23rd home run of the year for the Orioles. Well, how about that is number 55 in the month for the Orioles. Mm -hmm. That it ties a Major League Baseball record. The Oakland A's back in 1996 also hit 55 home runs in a month. That was in 29 games. The Orioles have done it in 27 games and still have a little bit of time to break that record. But 55 home runs in the month of June for the Orioles. They are mashing the baseball guys. Yeah, they're on pace for some pretty impressive records when it comes to offense. Count is one ball and one strike to Cameron Rupp. Most home runs in a season for an American League team. Uh, the Seattle Mariners hit 264 in 1997. So we're going to miss by Rupp. At home, and the Orioles. They're going to shatter the home record. They're also going to sh shatter the collective record for home runs. One through nine in that lineup. Can all do it. One ball, two strikes to Rupp. And Cameron lines it to right center field. That'll be another base hit. It's his second hit of the day. Second hit, but fourth ball he's squared up. Yeah, I think the ball he hit last time was the hardest hit ball he had all day. The line drive to right field. Yeah, that was hit. I, I think the ground out to shortstop his second at bat was a bullet. Freddie Galvez is two for three and now four for 12 in this series. And 11 for 33 on this road trip. It's like he's kind of found his swing again. Pitcher spot is due up after, or excuse me, the number nine spot is up after Cesar Hernandez. That's Andres Blanco. He came on as part of a double switch. 
inside one and one to Galvis. Love to answer here for the Phillies if they can get a couple yeah. in the top of the eighth inning just to give them a sense of momentum going to the top of the ninth inning. Ground ball right side another base hit for Freddie Galvis. It's his third of the day. That means the tying run is coming to the plate in Cesar Hernandez. Second baseman Cesar Hernandez. Have a day. Have a road trip. Well if you're Chip Hal you're sitting there thinking can they do it again. Why not. Phillies now with 12 hits. Don't forget they opened this series with a 16 hit day. Hudson throws a lot of fastballs. Cesar, a very good fastball hitter. Cesar does have two hits today. He has singled and doubled. He's also struck out. Riders lead off first and second. He got a fastball right there and he fouls it back. He put a good swing on it. And the left hander starts to throw again to the bullpen. Shot left side picked up by Lamb stumbles to first not in time an infield hit for Cesar Hernandez and the bases are loaded. It wasn't exactly what Cesar wanted to do but his speed enabled the Phils to load up the bases with one man down. And now that's Cesar's third hit of the ball game. 13 hits for the Phillies this afternoon gets out of the box so quickly. Lamb having a range to his left takes an extra step there but Cesar watch how quickly he gets out of the box turns on the Jets and does not what Tom at the bag does not lunge at the bag. I thought you were going to say call himself safe because there's <laughs> a lot of guys that do that too. Mike Butcher is out to talk to his right hander with Andres Blanco coming up Blanco was one of the heroes in last night's ball game. He goes from stop to full speed in a second. Cesar does. Yeah. Absolutely. Bases are loaded. Runners lead off all the way around. Andres Blanco up for the first time, hitting 270. Takes outside, one ball and no strikes. Two and oh. 
You take it a pitch here. Or are you looking for a fastball that you can drive? Fastball you can drive. Chip held a lot of pacing last night. He's on the horn here. Checking to see what's going on in the bullpen. Phillies down by three here in the top of the eighth inning. Fastball at the knees, and it's two and one. It's okay. May not have been the one he could drive. So what? You take it? You still have two left. Top of the order is due up next for the Phillies. Odubel Herrera is in the on deck circle. Broken bat looper out toward right field. Tomas is coming in. He won't get there. One run is in. Here comes Galvis. He'll score. And over to third base, Cesar Hernandez. And Andres Blanco has made this a one-run game. Well, there's your two, Tom. Let's get greedy and get some more. Threat me with a good time. Man. Boy, Andres Blanco just continues to be one of the best pinch hitters in the league. He gets jammed, but so what? A good read by Freddie Galvis. Well, Galvis read it well. Hernandez read it well. Hernandez was talked to about from by Juan Samuel about going first to third. He said, hey, listen, you got to go hard. You got to pick me up right away. And he did it in that spot. So a pitching change for the Diamondbacks. Blanco's two run base hit has made this a one run game. We'll take a break and be back at Chase Field right after this. To break down today's road trip finale and preview the upcoming homestand, which begins Friday against the Royals, only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Now the Phillies have picked up 14 hits here today. They trail it by one, and the Diamondbacks go to the bullpen for Andrew Chafin. Chafin, a 7.29 ERA. Lefties are hitting 229 against him, and he's in because the lefty Odubel Herrera is coming up. Phillies have the tying run at third, the go ahead run at first base. And Odubel today is 0 for 3. He walked and scored in the first inning on the home run by Borges. Keep it moving. Yeah, Diamondback set up for two up the middle. And Odubel takes upstairs 1 0. Oh. This is the only lefty that the Diamondbacks have in their bullpen. They do have an assortment of right handers still available, including Jake Barrett.
No double lifts it foul. And out of play. That was a pretty good pitch to hit right there. It was. You know, Dubal's a bit disappointed he missed it. Andres Blanco is part of a six, seven, eight, and nine in this order today that has 11 of the 14 hits. That includes Zach Eflin with the double in the fifth, his first major league hit. One ball, one strike. Over to the third base, off the glove of Lamb. Here comes Hernandez. Everybody will be safe, and the Phillies have tied it up at seven. Twelfth error of the year for Jake Lamb. An RBI for Odubel Herrera, and now Chip Hell is coming back out to bring the right-hander in. That ball got on Jake Lamb quickly, but he had it, and it went in his glove. And it just came right out of his glove. The Phillies will take it. They have scored three runs here in the eighth inning. Watch it how quickly it gets on them. And you're really not expecting if you're a third baseman a ball to be hit down that way if you're left if you're at third base. But that's the way it goes. Uh, they are using everybody out of the bullpen today for the Diamondbacks. In fact, this is the third pitcher that Chip Hale has used in this inning. Jake Barrett will take over. Daniel Hudson started the inning. And then Andrew Chafin. And now it's Jake Barrett. 3.54 ERA, and he'll be in to face Peter Borges with runners on first and second. Phillies have come back. To score three runs here in the eighth inning to tie the ball game up. They were down 4 2, they tied it at 4. Now they were down 7 4, and they've tied it at 7. And Borges takes outside. Borges today, 1 for 4. He homered his first time up. Nice play by Herman and he got lucky on that one didn't he. He sure did. He couldn't decide whether the backhanded or not but he got in front of it. And was able to block it to keep the runners at first and second. Well, he did end up backhanding it. Not backhanding but he just went down and. How he turned his glove that way and still caught it is beyond me. Balls and no strikes to Peter Borges. So he's going to take at least one strike here. And 
and he does ball four and the bases are now loaded and it brings uh, Cody Ashy to the plate. Ashy has two RBIs a double in the fifth inning and a single in the seventh inning. Matt Williams knows exactly what Chip Hal's thinking. He went through it the last couple of years with the Nationals as they chat in the dugout. Mike Butcher is going to go out to talk. That's not a good way to please your manager. Brings you in a ball game. You walk Peter Borges on four pitches. Four, four pitches. Yep. Better late than never. Ninth inning last night, the Phillies two runs on three hits, and today three runs on four hits. And the hope is they're not done. They can push a couple more across here in the top of the eighth inning. Hector Naris is throwing in the bullpen for the Phils. Well, Murph guaranteed if the Phillies won the first two, he'd dive into the pool. Murph, uh, you have any other guarantees? You want to walk home from Phoenix or something if the Phillies <laughs> score here? No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna root the guys home from here on out. <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> Bases are loaded. Cody Ashy is ready. He is two for four today. Infield is in. Pitches outside. Ball one. It's one and zero. Oh. Two ways to look at it. He's thrown five straight out of the strike zone, but you figure he's going to have to groove one eventually. Yes. And I'm thinking more of the latter if I'm Cody Ashy right now. I'm thinking, leave a cookie out there. He thought he got one and he fouls it. It's one and one. I don't know how easy or hard it is uh, to, to think about that. You know, you're thinking, all right, I'm going to go after one if it's in this zone. Is that that's, how it that's is? That's all you can do is zone him up. Just because he throws a strike doesn't mean it's the strike you're looking to hit. The infield is in for the Diamondbacks with the bases loaded and the one one pitch. And a liner out towards center field. Bourne going back. He's under a tagging from third is Blanco. He's going to score, and the Phillies have taken the lead. Cody Ashy with a sack fly, his third RBI of the day. It's eight to seven. Knowing exactly what needs to get done. Keep the ball off the ground. Only kill this rally with a double play. Cody goes up there looking not the best pitch to elevate. Look where his head is. His back foot clear his hips are cleared. Stay tight with his back elbow. Pretty swing. All this began with a line out to center field and then it unraveled for the bullpen of the Diamondbacks. One run lead for the Phils. Howard is up as a pinch hitter. And he takes low one and zero. Oh. Cody Ashy three ribbies today. Ten RBIs on the season. Another one out there Ryan. Still a good hitters count for Howard. Two balls and one strike. Three and one. Tommy Joseph on deck. Remarkable last night that Howard worked out the walk that gave the Phils the uh, run they needed to win. And his reaction at home plate was hysterical. He had a fist pump going. Here's the 3 1 pitch to him. And he taps it at the plate. Borges will be off and running on this one. That ball got a piece of Herman, the catcher. Ended up being the game winning walk. A 
all the things that Ryan Howard has done last night became the first time he ever walked to help the Phils win a game to have the game winning run score on a walk. Three two pitch runner goes from first pitches inside and low ball four. And the inning continues and the guy who started the inning with the hot shot to center field Tommy Joseph will bat again. Chappelle back on the phone. And he hit the hardest ball of the inning and, and made this, it out. And this must be a very surreal feeling for Tommy Joseph to face his former Little League teammate, Jake Barrett, in a major league game with the bases loaded. And a breaking ball, it's 0 1. I'm sure, in one way, shape, or form, they have faced each other before. Outside corner 0 and 2. Both growing up in this area. And both realizing a dream of playing a big league baseball. And Joseph fouls it up the first base line. Jake Barrett attended Arizona State University. If Tommy Joseph had not signed with the San Francisco Giants, he would have gone to Arizona. Wow. So they would have faced each other probably again. Three games in Arizona, the Phillies with 20 runs and 41 hits. 41 hits. It's awesome. The 0 2 pitch. Fouled away again. Toward third, Lamb will get another chance. And across the diamond in time, and the side is retired. The Phillies send 10 men to the plate in the inning. Cody Ashey's sacrifice fly has turned out to be the difference, but so many other swings were the difference in this inning. Just put the ball in play, boys, and good things are going to happen. And that's exactly what produced the Phil's four run inning.
two three inning. Every time the Phillies pitchers do that, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Hector Neris in his 42nd game, his major league leading 42nd game. 49 strikeouts and 42 in the third. He's trying to keep this string of scoreless appearances going. As Brandon Drury fouls the first one off his foot, it's 0 1. It'll be Drury, Ahmed, and then Michael Bourne, who's been a problem today. Oh, and two. A little trouble squaring up that split. If you do throw a fastball, just make sure it's off the plate away. So I didn't see one adjustment from the 00 to the 01. Swing and a miss. He got him three straight splits. And Cameron Rupp will throw to first base to finish this one off. That one was filthy. It sure was. Watch how hot this ball comes out of his hand, and then it just dives. It's nasty. Oh, what a way. Nick Ahmed, who started the three run rally for the Diamondbacks in the seventh inning, coming off the bench as a pinch hitter. Well, he did the same thing Brewery did. He found same the first swing. pitch off his foot. Same swing out and around the ball. So out and around, so Nick Ahmed's. Instead of going straight at the pitcher with your hands, your first move with your hands is towards the Phillies dugout. Fastball, the first one of the inning, and it's one ball and one strike. Whatever they've done with Hector Neris, they've gotten him back to where his arm slot needs to be. At least uh, it seems that way over the last 10 days. One two pitch. This time Ahmed lays off, and it's two and two. Too much of the plate. Yeah, but when you're looking for the split, that's true. You can get away with it. So that's why you're tardy on it. Yeah. Exactly the reason. Off the plate, over to third. Blanco comes charging, picks it on a hot throws to first, not in time. Not much you can do on that one. Tommy Joseph's looking over to the dugout. He tried to sell it. You're right, nothing Andres could do. He got to it quickly, he got rid of it quickly, and he put something on it. Right on the money. He's safe. He just got there ahead of the throw. Good hustle by Ahmed. He didn't lunge. He kept his stride low. And he hit the front of the bag. So a base runner with one out. And here is Michael Bourne, who was three for three today. Came into this game hitting 242. His average is now at 260. He has two doubles. One was conventional. The other one he hustled for two. One ball and no strikes.
try to slide step there and it's two and oh. Back at it scooped by Cameron Rupp. Lead on the 93 mile an hour fastball and it's two and one. Got him. Got him with the split. They went fishing after it as it darted down, and there are two outs. And the first time today the Phillies have solved Michael Bourne. It's the right time to do it. Another splitter. Second baseman, Kate Trust your catcher. <laughs> He's swung over top of that by a foot and a half. So now Segura. Segura lined out his last time up. He has an RBI today and a sack fly. Inside, one ball and no strikes. Ricky Weeks is out of the on deck circle. There he is. He's been out of the on deck circle a couple of times today. Rudder goes, pitches inside, throw to second by Cameron. Rupp is not in time. Tying runners in scoring position. I think the Diamondbacks surprised the Phillies there with that stolen base. Ahmed kept the right pitch to go on. A very good jump there by Ahmed. Not a good pitch to throw on. I don't think there's anything Cameron Rupp could have done. Yeah, I think the Phillies, I think Naris just thought, all right, he's going to stay over at first base. But Ahmed is able to swipe the bag, so the tying runners in scoring position. Segura, who is 0 for 3 with a sack fly, is ahead two balls and no strikes. Off the glove of Cameron Rupp, and now Ahmed goes to third base. A wild pitch. Yanks that fastball. Mm -hmm. Jim Mark Gomez is starting to throw in the pen now for the Phils. Three balls and no strikes to Segura. And ball. Nope. 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 Hold up. Hold up. Three and one. <laughs> Del Scott styling behind the plate. Now he's back three and two. That ball got a piece of Dale Scott. There's Zinmar. Scoring position today. Phillies four for 12. Diamondbacks three for 11. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball over to third base. Blanco comes in, bare hands, pumps to third, uh, to home, and then throws wide of the first base bag. The game is tied. Segura going to second. The throw not in time. It's an 8 8 game. I'm not sure why Andres pumped toward home. I forgot how many outs there You don't see him making mistakes like that. No. And that's why I was wondering why he went to the bare hand. I said that's a very aggressive play to go to the bare hand. 
You see him attack this baseball. And Segura runs okay, but not where you have to back it, or not where you have to just barehand it. So the scoreless streak for Hector Naris ends after seven consecutive outings. And now the go ahead run is at second base here at the bottom of the eighth inning. Ricky Weeks is the batter, and he takes a strike. It's 0 1. They've scored it a hit. Wow. And an RBI for Segura. Andres Blanco is seething at himself over at third base. I think you're Can right. Can you think, think of any other explanation? The only thing I thought about was he was he didn't have the grip on it and he was trying to get the grip, but he did pump toward home. He pumped towards home. Inside, nearly hit weeks, and it's one and one. Give Ahmed some credit. He reached on the infield hit. He stole second. Again, I think he surprised everybody with the steal of second. Went to third on a wild pitch and scored on the infield hit. Two balls and two strikes. For the Phillies in there, half of the ninth inning, it'll be Cameron Rupp, Freddie Galvis, Cesar Hernandez. In what is now an 8 8 game. on the infield single went to second on the error by Blanco it is in scoring position with two outs two balls two strikes to weeks 27 hits combined between the two teams in the series and that ball got a piece of Ricky Weeks so he is aboard and now Paul Goldschmidt will be the batter Cameron Rupp does not think that ball hit Ricky Weeks and he's looking at the dugout for them to look at it underneath. That can be reviewed. We'll take a look. Can't tell. I mean, I can't tell if it, if it changed directions. Maybe that's just something Dale Scott heard. He heard it hit. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, take a listen. People can it's coming out but it's not to challenge it's to go get Hector Neris and bring in Genmar Gomez with Paul Goldschmidt coming up for the Diamondbacks. So a pitching change here at Chase Field the run is in. We're tied up at eight runners on first and second we'll be back after this.
now for our WV Mason deliveries of the game. Boy, the Phillies offense really has been humming along these uh, last couple innings, in particular in the eighth inning. Andres Blanco gets an inside fastball of Hudson, deposited in left field, and Odubel Herrera smokes the ball to Jake Lamb at third base. Cannot handle it. E5, and then Cody Ashey with a sack fly. Good piece of hitting to score Andres Blanco. And this play right here, the bat of Gene Segura, goes down as a single and a thrown area, but I don't know. That's your WB Mason deliveries of the game. And that tied it up at, at eight. Here's Blanco backing up on that ball by Goldschmidt. He throws him out. So Genmar Gomez throws one pitch and gets out of the eighth inning. But the Diamondbacks tie it up. We'll go to the top of the ninth, all even at eight. There have been uh, nine runs scored in the last two innings combined between the uh, Diamondbacks and the Phils. Phillies will need at least one or two more here in the top of the ninth inning, preferably two. I know they need one, but the way this game's going, you want to get as many as possible. Brad Ziegler, who blew last night's ball game for the Diamondbacks, is on the pitch here in the top of the ninth inning. And he'll face Cameron Ruff. 2.88 ERA for Ziegler, who has blown two saves in the last week for Arizona. You know what to look for of Ziegler. Big sweeping slider. Now the 83, 84 mile an hour sinker. You wonder how different he'll be today because he really had no command of that slider yesterday. Cameron Ruff swings at the first pitch and fouls it, and it's 0 1. Ruff had a single, and that started the eighth inning rally. He is two for four. Low ball one. Two balls and one strike to Cameron Rupp. Rupp and then Freddie Galvis here in the top of the ninth inning. Two and two. Ziegler will top out at 84 miles an hour. It's all about location and movement with his pitches. That probably the best pitch that Cameron had to hit. I think Cameron was sitting slider there.
high chopper to shortstop. Ahmed is up with it and one away. Galvis is coming up. Galvis has three hits today. He's three for four. He has five hits in the series now. Well, Phillies fan, if you're looking for offense, you got it today. Now you need a, just a little pitching. Galvis hits it sharply, but Ahmed ranges to his left, two away. I think that's the, the biggest thing that Ziegler can do right there. I mean, you sit there and you're like, I'm going to square it up, but you're just off a tick. And he hit it sharply right at one of the infields. He does hit it hard. Here's Cesar Hernandez, who also has three hits today and a run scored. Reminder that an off day tomorrow and then Friday, 7 o'clock, between the Phils and the Kansas City Royals. Xfinity Fireworks Show takes place afterward. We'll be on Comcast Sportsnet. Over to first base. Goldschmidt waits on it. He flips to Ziegler covering. No chance. Cesar Hernandez with his fourth hit of the day. It's his second infield hit. I mean, no chance. To have four or have two four hit games. On one road trip. And he's a top speed. It's just not even close. Yeah, he's like a Porsche. There he goes. Ziegler's not going to win that race. So the second four hit game of this road trip has been mentioned. And here's Andres Blanco, who had the two run singles last time up. That's his only at bat today. Takes inside one ball and no strikes. He hasn't thrown one slider yet. It was so off last night. Maybe that's why. However, that's one of his main pitches, if not his most important pitch. Runner goes, pitches bounce to first, and Goldschmidt is there. And the inning is over, so we'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning here in Arizona. Phillies go down, no runs, one hit, and one man left. We're tied up at eight. We'll be back right after this. of the night. Arizona Diamondbacks looking to end this one in regulation. Phil's looking for extra innings at Chase Field when it's said and done. Off back to Philadelphia go the Phil's for a weekend series with the Kansas City Royals. On Friday it'll be Ian Kennedy taking on Jeremy Hellickson. On Saturday at 5.50 Eastern Time Danny Duffy the lefty versus Aaron Nola and it'll be Ventura and Velasquez on Sunday at 1.35. But this one is not over yet guys. Hopefully we're a look at some extra innings today. Absolutely, Murph. So we're here in the bottom of the ninth inning, and Jake Lamb will lead it off for the Diamondbacks against Jenmar Gomez. Gomez came on, got the final out in the eighth inning, and he delivers outside 1 0 here in the ninth. 
Phillies have had their share of one run games during this road trip. Trying to sweep out the Diamondbacks. One and one. Lamb hit a three run home run of the first inning to straightaway center field. I mean, it was a shot. And a good rip there. Phillies have Brett Oberholzer left in the bullpen and David Hernandez. Broken background ball softly left side. This will be a tough play. And Lamb's able to beat it out. They were shifting to play him to pull. So there was really no chance for Freddie Galvis to come over and make that play. Well, I guess there's always a chance, just that he ran out of time. And Jake Lamb smells this hit. Freddie does his best to get around the baseball quick release on the money. Boy, that was close. It was. Nice play. I think Lamb did get there. The Phillies are thinking about looking at it. Nope, Larry Bow is back on the bench. And he just signaled safe to everybody. All right, so now, yes, Monty Tomas, who is one for three. I have to be careful with this guy, even though his numbers here at home are not very good. 216 with three home runs here at Chase Field. He didn't swing. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Wow. Well, he swung that time. That wasn't a bad pitch to swing at. Moved at the last minute. And now it's 0-2. Lamb goes back to first. Phillies post game live is coming up right at the conclusion of this ball game. Ricky Metallico is standing by. And a liner to center field, and that'll drop in front of Odubel Herrera. So the winning run is now at second with nobody out. Tomas, second hit of the ball game. Sharp line drive to center field. A lot of it, Chris Herman up, and now it's decision time for Chip Howe. I mean, is he butting here? Nobody out. Runners on first and second. I think he'd have to. I would agree with that. Have to. He looked down in the third base coach's box. Runners lead off. Herman squares. Takes it high and it's 1-0. Out to talk to Jenmar Gomez. <laughs> Only five sacrifice bunts during his career, one this year. And he bunts it foul. One ball, one strike. Right idea to bunt it toward third and get Andres Blanco to field it.
And Ber Herman bunts it right in front of the plate. Rupp's throw to third is in time. They get the lead runner. Wow. That Williams is saying, take a look at it. I couldn't believe Cameron Rupp was going to third base, but he fired it on a line. In my mind, I'm saying to myself, no, no, no. Yeah, I thought he got him too. I do too. He's got such a strong arm. He got to it quickly. Pounced on it like a puma. Left fielder. Brandon Look out, Jen Mark. Yeah, you know, the, the lead foot looked like it went up over the bag. Awkward slide there by Lamb. Oh, yeah, he got him. Oh, yeah. Well, they were looking at it underneath. They've decided not to review it, rightfully so. So, one out, runners on first and second. And here's Brandon Drury. Well, we've seen a lot of things happening during this ball game. Drury takes inside. That's a straight reactionary play on Cameron Rupp's part. If he were to think about what he just did, there's no way he'd do make that attempt again. There's no way. His common sense would tell you not to. Yeah, he definitely took a chance on it, and I think it's he's thinking, I got a good arm. I'm going to be able to get it there, and he did. And now it's 2-0 to Drury. Nick Ahmed, who's been a big part of these last couple of innings, is in the on-deck circle for the Diamondbacks. There he is. What he's looking for right there. That is the scoring position of this series. The Phillies have outnumbered the Diamondbacks. They've had 41 opportunities. In a three game series, that's unheard of. Two balls and one strike. And Drury fouls it off to the right. And it's two and two. Cameron Ruff goes running out to the mound. Well, Scott was just about to go break up the conversation. Set for extra innings. Odubel Herrera, Peter Borges, Cody Ashier do up to the top of the tenth inning if we get there. If and when we get there. Over to shortstop, that could be two. Galvis to second for one, quickly over to first, in time, a 6-4-3 double play, and the inning is over. Jenmar Gomez clapping his hands, looking at Cameron Rupp for making that play to get the first out. So, we head to the top of the 10th inning. This double play means the Phils will live for another inning. We'll be back right after this.
top of the tenth inning. Well, both these teams have uh, had their share of extra inning games. The Phillies are four and zero oh in extra inning games so far, and the Diamondbacks are two and three. So we'll go to the top of the tenth inning, and the new pitcher for the Diamondbacks will be Silvino Bracho in his ninth game. He's allowed ten hits and six walks in eight innings of work. And he's on to face Odubel Herrera. Cameron Rupp's decision to get the force at third base really set up that that bottom of the ninth inning. Set up the double play ball. And it got Lamb who had an awkward slide into the third base bag. Peter O'Brien is the new left fielder. And here is Odubel. Bracho delivers a fastball just outside. It's one ball and no strikes. Odubel walked in the first inning and scored. There's Overholzer, the long man. He's been on base twice. He reached on an error his last time, and that error turned out to be a big one in that inning when the Phillies scored four runs to take the lead. One ball and one strike, an off-speed pitch. Good changeup. Peter Borges waits on deck. Out to center field, Michael Bourne will settle under it. And he makes the catch. And one away here in the tenth inning. Double thought he hit that one a little bit better than he did. Yeah, the bat flick, it gets me every time. I was strictly just watching him and I see the bat flip. I'm thinking, oh, we got something cooking here. Yep. And it's just the fly ball to center. F8. Well, Peter Borges is now up. Borges walked his last time, one for four. Homer his first time up. And he pulls that one toward the hole. Ahmed backhands, throws, all in one motion, not in time. And Borges is safe at first. Boy, Ahmed got rid of that fast. I'm thinking that's you saw me. I was waving. And that's a knock. How quickly did he get rid of that baseball? I don't know what he's upset about. There's nothing else he could have done. I was thinking he's going to put this in his pocket with the way that Peter can run. Wow. Well, he made it close. Borges, though, did cross the bag ahead and a lead on, or one out single. And that'll bring up Cody Ashey. Ashey has three RBIs today. Pitcher spot is due up next, and Tyler Goodell is out of the on deck circle for the Phils. Cody Ashey's average is up to 280 with his two hits today. Gorgeous, a short lead off first. No balls and one strike to Ashy. You see, Bracho has a very good changeup. His motion sometimes, uh, I would think, is deceptive too when it comes to that changeup. Everything's fast, 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 and then he throws an 83 mile an hour changeup. Decided to go to the breaking ball, and it's one ball and one strike. The Phillies have been successful with free baseball this year, 4 0, trying to win their fifth game. They're trying to finish off a sweep of this series.
And Cody rips it into right field, another base hit. Borges around second, heading to third. Tomas's throw is cut off, and it's first and third with one man down. Cody Ashey is really coming to life on this road trip. He swings at his elbow guard, falls off. Hey, he doesn't need it. Great read by Peter Borges. That ball was hit hard, was it not? It was. Tomas has a good arm in right field, does he not? He does have a decent arm, yeah. The secondary lead here by Peter. Look, I mean, there's just no doubt in his mind that he's getting to third base. He's gone. That is just, that's great to see. So runners on first and third with one man down. Goodell will pinch it. The infield is coming in for the Diamondbacks. And Goodell went around on that first pitch. According to Bob Davidson, it's 0 1. Tyler hitting 227, three home runs, and 12 RBIs. His playing time has been diminished recently because of uh, what Peter Borges has done and what Cody Ashey has done. But man, can he come through right here? Pitch is high and it's one ball and one strike. 31 hits in this ball game, 17 by the Phillies. 17 hits are a season high now for the Phillies. So they had 16 in game one and now they've eclipsed that with 17 here today. 16 is still the high in a nine inning game. One ball and one strike. And a liner to right center field. Tomas going back and he makes the catch. Tagging from third is Borges. He'll score. He had to go back though. He thought the ball was over Tomas's head. It's a sacrifice fly for Tyler Goodell and it's 9-8 Phillies. I'll take the run, but how did he catch that? I don't know. Ball was off the bat hot for Tyler Goodell. I just complimented Peter on his great first and third. And he can take credit for this run, but Peter, you got to get back. Well, uh, now I'll tag. Actually, I think he did tag okay. I think he just wasn't sure. Better be safe than sorry. Absolutely. So now Tommy Joseph with a runner at first base. Billy's up 9 8, and Joseph rips it foul. And it's 0 1. Is there anybody cooler than Juan Samuel? <laughs> Seriously. Because he didn't react he to that didn't ball. He didn't even move. Ball was scolded. Sammy just watched it going by. Over to right field. Tomas comes in and makes the catch. That's a fine play. And the inning is over. The Phillies, though, take the lead yet again. On to the bottom of the ninth inning. They lead it by one, and here comes Brett Oberholzer.
It's nine to eight as we go to the bottom of the tenth inning, and Brett Overholzer is the new pitcher for the Bills as he's trying to close this one out. He will face Nick Ahmed for Overholzer, 5.35 ERA, 31 strikeouts and 38 and two thirds. Trying to get three outs and send the Phillies home with a series sweep. Pay back the D-backs who swept out the four-game series in Philadelphia. Leading off for the D-backs, shortstop, Nick Ahmed. It's pretty lonely for David Hernandez down there right now. <laughs> he is all that's left down of the Phillies bullpen. There he is. There's David. No room in the end. Ahmed fires one toward right center field. Borges on the run makes the catch. Man, that guy didn't start the game, but he has been a thorn in the side of everybody since he's entered the game. And they're finally able to get rid of him. What a way. Center field. Right he's done it defensively. Ball. Done it offensively as well. I think his stolen base in the eighth inning was huge. Yeah. But Borges is able to track it down because he's had himself a good day too. And now Mike Michael Bourne will be the batter. Bourne is three for four today. And he bunts toward the right side. Here comes Cesar, bare hands, and he won't have a play. He throws it past Tommy Joseph. But fortunately it hits the fence. It doesn't go into the dugout. So Michael Bourne has his fourth hit. Smart play. Second baseman, Dave McKay asking around. Michael Bourne, are you okay? He said, I'm okay. That's a perfectly placed bunt. First four hit game of the year. First one since the September of 2015. And now Segura, who has two RBIs today. Reminder that Peter O'Brien came in as part of a double switch, so he's in the on deck circle for the Diamondbacks because the pitcher's spot is the number seven spot. Paul Goldschmidt be great if this game was over before he even got up. Got to keep an eye on Bourne. He has six stolen bases this year. Ball and no strikes. One and one. 89 mile an hour fastball. Push that change up a little bit.
Martínez. Out to right field. Peter Borges is there. Has to backpedal a little bit, and there are two outs, and he quickly gets the throw in. But Oberholzer had two saves in the minor leagues in single A. First selected by the Atlanta Braves. So the ninth inning ended, and it's a great double play, 6 4 3. But there's just no fear, I don't think, for second baseman anymore. You know, obviously that worked out in the Phillies' favor, but I mean, you can go in there a bit more aggressively, I think, and disrupt that play, but you're not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah, in fact, that was close because he did roll a little bit once he went into the, the fielder. Here is Peter O'Brien. And O'Brien waves at the first pitch changeup. But what I'm saying is they know they're not going to get hit whatsoever. I agree with that. I mean, it's a very comfortable turn. And it certainly changed my thinking because I thought, well, if he's safe at first, they could overturn that and rule it a double play because of the way he went into him. The 0 1 pitch, up and in, one ball, one strike. O'Brien on the year hitting 132 with four homers and eight runs batted in. He does have pop. Bourne leads off first. Swing and a miss. Another change up. The first one he got him to swing at was 80. That one's 81. Paul Goldschmidt is on deck. He's scored a run of their half of the tenth inning. Six runs since the seventh inning began. And they lead it nine to eight. One ball and two strikes. Swing and a miss. He got him with a fastball. And Brett Oberholzer with his first major league save. And the Phils another extra inning victory. They win it by a final of nine to eight. The offense managed 17 hits in the game. Peter Borges, Cody Ashey, they played a huge role in the outcome of today's ball game. In fact, Ashey is our Chevrolet player of the game. Three for five, a double, and three runs batted in. You want to talk about a team effort? Never giving up. That is it. Perfect example.